a day in the life of Hollywood, 1930s. With the voices of Dominique Breckenridge as Betty Gray, Jazz Hamilton as Rachel Ellis Hagen, Tamara Solomon as Pike Anderson, and then Tony Dodd as Mason Davis. As the holidays are upon us, and we are in the thick of one such day today, the cast of A Day in the Life Of would like to share with you a story, much like the golden age of radio used to do when shows such as Radio Reader's Digest, Mercury Theater, Command Performance, and others used to do when they brought you comedy, drama, or adventure pieces starring some of Hollywood's greatest actors of their time, from Charles Boyer to Cary Grant. We now would like to bring you such a piece on this holiday. <laughs> written by Dominique Breckenridge, performed here tonight by our own Betty Gray as Sarah Peters, Rachel Ellis Hagen as Emily Peters, myself, Pike Anderson as Leela Peters, and Mason Davis as Paul, just Paul. This story tonight puts a spotlight on three sisters, one sister in particular who just wishes something wonderful could happen for them, proving that when you wait for something, ask for something, have faith in something, just long enough. Maybe, just maybe, it will. So without further hindrance, we give a story of hope. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lita Peters. I am the third of three Peters sisters. There are my older sisters, Sarah Peters, who seem to be both sister and mother to me, and our older sister, Emily Peters, who seems to be sister and parent in all. I would like to share with you my story. It all started one day in the month of November. The leaves had fallen, the trees were covered in gold and bronze, and the laughter of children who knew nothing of the reality of the world their parents were facing, laughing in the yards to play. The same could not be said of my sisters and I, for we knew all too well the true realities of life. We didn't have the luxury of our parents helping us through the times that passed, but in their own way, they were more help to us than we'd ever know. The house we lived in was a gift from them, in which they worked their whole lives to achieve. And for that important goal, I and my sisters are everlasting grateful. For if it weren't for their outlook to the future of their children, I may not have been able to share this story with you now. During those times, the depression seemed not only like it was right next door, but it was living with us, right in the house. Emily! Yes, Leela, in here. Anything come for me? No. Like what? A telegraph? Message? Mail? Phone call? Delivery? No, 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 nothing quite like that. Then what, darling? What is it, Leela? You've been asking if anything has come for you for weeks now. And every week it seems the same answer to my same question. What are you looking for? I'm your sister. I want to help you if I can. I know, Emily, and it's very nice of you. I appreciate it. You and Sarah both. Then what is it, Leela? Are you in trouble? No, but I'm going to be if I don't clean Sarah's dress before she gets in. Leela, what happened? The back of your skirt is perfectly soiled. You mean Sarah's skirt is perfectly soiled. She let me wear it today to work, and on my way home, someone ran me over in the street with their bicycle. Well, get it off. We'll, clean, we'll get it cleaned. Poor Sarah. She's going to have an epoxy if she comes in to see her new dress ruined. Poor Sarah. Poor you. If poor Sarah finds the dress she brought back from Paris is all done in, she might do you the same. Took her eight years to save up every dime of hers to pay for that trip to Paris. Heaven knows how she managed to save for a dress. Come home and you ask to wear it brand new, and she hands it over for you to wear firsthand, never worn. She's a good sister. She's never wanting anything for herself. I was so happy when she was able to get away. That was the only thing in life she'd ever wanted, even if it was only for a short while. She'll be an evil sister if she sees this, and for a long while. Emily, Leela, anyone here? Uh-oh, you better rush upstairs and take off this dress. Lay it in my room. I I'll take care of it when you come back downstairs. Right. 
You're a wonderful sister too, Emily. All right, all right, enough of that. Hurry up. Hey, Emily. Oh, hello, Sarah. Where's Leela? Uh, she's upstairs. She came in and rushed. She wanted to rush and take a bath before supper. Hey, is she, she been feeling okay? As far as I know. What do you mean? Well, she's been seeing a little mopey, I suppose. A little quiet. More quiet than usual. If situations don't change around here, I'm afraid we'll all be having mopey faces. I don't know how much longer I can put off the light bill, and the phone is beginning to seem like a luxury we won't be able to keep. So what? We've had to walk to the drugstore to use the phone before. Who needs a telephone anyway? It'll give those ladies across the street something to gossip about when they see us running back and forth from the drugstore. You'd like that, I'm sure. Mother never cared for them. I suppose I don't either. They spend more time sitting on their porches gossiping about their neighbors than they do fussing at each other. But what about Leela? Is the kid doing all right? It isn't healthy for that girl to stay locked up in her room all night. It's not like we have any extra cash lying around the house to go out. No, but she could take walks around the block with George and I. What fun would that be for her? Well, you never know who you'll meet on a late night stroll. Besides, what's George to me? I've known him since we were little kids. He's never taken a notice in me or I in him, other than someone to hang around when there's no one else to hang around. If anything good was going to happen, it would have happened already. Hey, why are they interested in me? I'm talking about Leela. Well, she keeps asking me if anything has come for her, but I don't know what it is. Oh, here, Emily, let me get that. These dishes are more than you can carry with a pot in your hand. Thanks, dear. I was sure dinner was going to be late today. The job held me over a full 30 minutes. Thought I'd miss the bus home for sure, but I, I can't complain. The fact that all three of us have steady jobs right now is nothing short of a miracle. Even if that old boss of yours underpays you. And no overtime. He keeps you held out late at least four nights a week. And no mention of thanks to go along with it. Speaking of, what brings you home so early? I figured I'd try to pick up a little extra cash. Agnes asked me if I could help her out over at the store. I came right home after work at the bookshop and told George we'd have to pick another night to go out. Gosh, Emily, I'm as broke now as I was the day I was born. Not a penny to line my person. Do you think that was a careless of me to take that trip? Erase it out of your mind, Sarah. We had this talk before you left and when you came back. Since ever I've known you, that's all you could ever talk about. Where you found out about Paris is anyone's guess. Mama used to say that you learned how to say Paris before you could say Papa. Now, I don't want to hear any more about it. Hello, Sarah. Hiya, Leela. Look at you. You're in a hype of a mood. What's brought this on? Uh-oh. My dress! Leela Peters, you ruined my dress! No, wait, Sarah. How does she know? Leela! How could you? It's no wonder she caught on. You came down here grinning like a chest cat from ear to ear. Sarah, just mentioned she hadn't seen you look so happy in weeks. Come to think of it, neither have I. Leela, really? What did I lend you this dress for if you were just going to go out and get it ruined? And what am I going to pay to have it fixed? Oh, I should have known that trip was a waste of money. A waste of money, my eye. I'm sorry, Sarah. Honestly, I am. A lot of good that's going to do me now. Look at this dress. Now, now, Sarah, if you feel that way, you shouldn't have never loaned it out to her. Leela didn't do it deliberately. She was run over on her way home from work. Run over? Did someone get the police? No, no. It wasn't anything like that. A boy, a man, someone ran me down with their bicycle when I was crossing the street. I'm sorry, Leela. I just looked at my... What am I thinking? Are you all right? Yes, scraped my leg up a bit, but I'm all right. Funny, my leg looks fine now. Who was it? Joy McKenzie? He's always flying around town like an express delivery. No, it was a motorcycle, I think. I didn't see his face. A motorcycle? You didn't tell me that. Honey, you just said it was a bicycle. You mean this fly off the handle didn't stop? Well... What did the bike look like? I... Wait, 
Before you answer this, Leela, you know Sarah's temper is hotter than Clark Gable on the screen. She'll help every psycho put in the middle of the street and set on fire just on suspicion. Well, I should. A maniac riding on wheels, endangering our baby sister. Calm down, Sarah. Calm down. She is no baby anymore, and you're not a prize fighter. Leave that to James Cagney. Well, he has a sister's, doesn't he? I'm sure that makes no difference here. Oh, yes, it does. I'm going out and find that character. Who? James Cagney. Oh, you're funny. What, Sarah? She doesn't even know what the bike looks like. I don't even know what the bike looks like. I didn't get a good look at it. Just let her go. Leave it to Sarah. She'll find out, all right? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Johnny. Hey, you! Is that your bike outside? Hey, is something wrong? Say, what do you mean knocking down young girls in the middle of the street? Look, with all due respect, miss, you seem to be standing just fine. And we're not in the middle of the street. We're standing in a drugstore at the soda fountain. Not in a... Say, are you cracked? Don't be so smart. You knocked over my baby sister earlier this afternoon. Not only did you ruin a perfectly good, brand new dress, more importantly, you ran over my sister. I, is the baby all right? Baby? There you go with that smart stuff again. Listen, I'm sorry, miss. Really, I am. Now, how much to replace the dress? Replace the dress? Look, mister, you knocked down my kid's sister. Never mind about the dress. Now, I don't know how you do things where you come from, but we're no run-of-the-mill setup here. You start knocking down people in the street, let alone my sister, you and I have a very serious problem. Is there anything I can do? Well, you can start by coming along with me to apologize to my sister. Hear from her what you can do. And if she says nothing, she'll hear from me. All right, brother. In you go. Emily! Leela! That man's here again. You just wait here. Sarah, is that you? Uh, oh, I I'm sorry. I didn't know you had... Sarah, don't tell me. Then I won't. Just get Leela down and... Oh, there you are, Leela. Leela, meet... Uh, what was your name? Just Paul. Yeah, Paul. Paul, meet my sister, Leela, whom is the lady in question, and our older sister, Emily. How do you do? Hello? Hello, Leela. Leela, why look at you. You're as pale as a monkey. What's the matter with you? He won't hurt you none, Leela. We'll make sure of that. I asked Paul here to come by and personally apologize for running you down in the street this afternoon. Maybe we should leave these two alone. Are you kidding? Come on, public enemy number one. Cagney's waiting for us outside. Well... If you need us, Leela, don't bother to knock. We'll be right in the kitchen peeping through the keyholes. Sit down, mister. Mister... Just, just call me Paul. Mr. Paul. No, mister, just Paul. All right, Paul. You live here with your sisters. Yes. Alone. Yes. Mother and father left you the house. In the street earlier, you, you meant to, that is, you tried to? Get your attention. Yes, Leela, I did. You've been waiting for me for a while, haven't you? Paul. Paul. I've come, Leela, just as you asked. Not as I expected. The bicycle? How could you? Different forms of flight. You didn't see any bike, did you, Leela? No. No, I didn't. I told Emily I didn't. But you are here, aren't you? Yes, Leela, I am. And all you need, all you've asked for, and all you've been waiting for is right in your hand. My hand? I don't see anything. It isn't what you see, Leela. It's what you feel. What you feel in your heart, in your spirit, Leela. Trust me, not what you can see, but believe what you can't. Make it grow, Leela. Water it every day, trust it. Understand it and develop it. Complete it with all you have in your heart, Lima. And be prepared for what you have in hand. It will carry you through the rest of your journey. What do I have? Your life, your faith. Write, Lima, write it down. 
your heart, mind, spirit, and soul. It will guide you and your hand. It will start you on your journey that once started must be followed through, true by you. While this gift is only for you, your sisters will share in your knowledge and understanding because it's willed so. So don't treat this lightly, for you have a long road ahead. Yes, yes I do. Thank you. It's not for me to be thanked. I'm only a messenger. If I need you again? You won't. You have everything already. You just have to hold fast to it. Thank you. Thank you. Leela, Leela, come on, Leela. What's the hold up? Dinner's getting cold. I'll be there in a minute. Paul? That's funny. What is it? Paul, he's gone. Me? Honey, are you feeling all right? The only thing I brought home with me is a headache. But Sarah, Emily, you remember, don't you? Sure I do. Why don't you go upstairs and I'll bring you up something. I told you, Emily, I don't think she's feeling well. My baby sister. But a man was here. He came here with Sarah. After I was run over in the street on my way home from work this afternoon. Honey... How about you sit down in this chair and we go bring her some water? Maybe, maybe I'm a little tired. But I know what just happened. I'm not making this up. Sure you're not, darling. Sarah? Sarah, come here a minute. Sure thing. You stay here, honey. What is it, Emily? Do you see what I see? Yes. And I don't believe it. There's a star above our window. Yes, and it's shining right upon us, like a spotlight. What do you think it means? I don't know, but I feel a change is on the horizon. Maybe Lula saw someone after all. And so the tale of the beginning of my story. enjoying your Thanksgiving day and we hope that you invite your friends and family to gather around if you just want to listen to us or see us and let us be a part of your Thanksgiving day because you are so much a part of ours. So be safe, don't eat too much, although that's probably not going to happen, and have a good one. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy holidays. I hope that you enjoy. Eat well. Continue to share with your friends and family. Join in. Come see us here on Twitter, on Tony Review, YouTube, wherever the dances may be. Share with your family and friends. Hook it up to the TV, you know, so you, after the football game. Yeah. Anyway, enjoy. Happy holidays. We'll see you again. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving and happy holidays to everyone. We hope you're enjoying uh, our cast, our broadcast. And we just hope you continue to tune in as you eat your turkey, legs, and cranberry sauce. Enjoy your family. Give them all a hug for Mason Davis. And just spread love and enjoy these holidays. Uh, we love you, Adamani Review. Happy Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving, we are thankful for you guys tuning in and watching us and sharing with us your feedback. Um, we love you guys as always, and we hope that you will continue to check us out. Happy holidays. We have to come back to the characters who played the roles tonight and the story written by Dominique Breckenridge. And the voices were provided by Jasmine Lofton as Rachel Ellis Hagen and Emily Peters. Tamara Solomon as Pike Anderson and Leela Peters. Tony Ballard as Mason Davis and Just Paul. And A Day in the Life of Creator. Dominique Breckenridge as Betty Gray and Sarah Peters, reminding you that all of the women's wardrobe worn tonight and the broadcast were provided by her line, Dominique Private Collection. This has been a Dominique Review production.
ladies and gentlemen. What's <laughs> up, woman? It's lifted. It's <laughs> messed up with my mouth. Okay, maybe not. Okay, bring it again. <laughs> I swear I want to laugh. I really want to Okay. And our older sister, Emily Peters, who seems to be easy. Uh, where did I get I don't think she's easy. <laughs> Easier. <laughs> okay. If poor Sarah finds his dress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why are they interested in me? I'm talking about Emily. Well, oh, sorry. That should be Leela. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Sarah. Honestly, I am. A lot of good that's going to do me now. Look at this dress. Now, Sarah, wait. It, wait. Oh. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Just a <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> okay. Pick okay. it up from. I'm sorry, Sarah. You have every night. Every night. Yeah. Going to find and go. With all due respect, Miss, you seem to be standing just fine. And we're not even in the middle of the street. We're standing in the drugstore at the parking lot. That's not even in the line at all. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Yuck, 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 yuck. Oh. And I had to give her a shout out on the Christmas special last year because Felicia had her glasses and if she didn't have them, stop. Did you have any glasses last yeah. time? No, I didn't. And yeah, I needed to let everybody know that Rachel be on it every week. I mean Jasmine. Well, Rachel. Well, both. They both be on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got a little excited. Rachel and Jasmine. That'll be a perfect character for the Christmas special. You can be bi oh, okay. The different. Can I, can that, I can put that picture up with you. <laughs> <laughs> She looked a little possessed, and I said, I gotta use this. <laughs> and I said, the many faces of Rachel Hayden. And then I got, Domini, really? Did you really just put me out there like that on Facebook? I said, well, you got likes from random people. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> I don't know these people. <laughs> so, I said, well, do you want me to take it down? She said, it's up there now. I saw it at work. It's in the cloud. It's <laughs> all right. It's on and just, guys, you're at your own risk with whatever faces you make. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> I'm so cool. sent the line, Dominique. <laughs> Maybe you do need a script. <laughs> what? Page 16. What? But I don't have anything. Yeah, you do. No, I, I, I got this about me saying happy Thanksgiving wishes. Now it's okay. okay. So that was oh, where so it stopped? Yeah, oh, it's not. It's not. You said, be sure to. And then it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'd like to thank our cast tonight for the characters played and the roles tonight were written in a script by Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have my notepad huh? and I got my pen. And, just, what? and I'm, you know, no, seriously. That's I what you do. And I'm just, <laughs> I type it out later. <laughs> our characters, <coughs> I'm sorry. One more. It was Rachel. What? She knocked something over and made a oh, noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It was the China. Making sure that they knew it wasn't him. It wasn't him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We got it.